being committed to God did not keep them from the furnace. Dr. Tony Evans says God let Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego take the heat so they and we could learn an important lesson. He got more glory in the fire than keeping him from the fire. This is The Alternative with Dr. Tony Evans, author, speaker, senior pastor of Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship in Dallas, Texas, and president of The Urban Alternative. It's inevitable that we'll take some heat for being believers, but that was literally true for three biblical characters we'll meet today as Dr. Evans takes us to Daniel chapter 3 for today's message. Christians are like tea bags. You really don't know how strong they are until they're put in hot water. The hot water that you face, particularly if it causes you to suffer, is really an opportunity to see God at his best. Remember now, nothing comes to you that doesn't pass through his fingers first. See, unless you understand that, you will become frustrated and angry and mad and you won't grow. God wants to use those suffering situations to let you see him at a deeper, deeper level. Such was the case in Daniel chapter 3 in one of the most well-known stories in the Bible. You have all heard it from your earliest days of Sunday school. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and Nebuchadnezzar's fiery furnace. Here are three young men who are thrown into a situation of suffering. Number one, they didn't ask to be where they were. They were in Babylon having been made captives from Israel. Because of God's judgment on Israel, they wind up in Babylon. It wasn't their fault they were in this pagan place. They they hadn't done anything to deserve this. But while there, they made the best of a bad situation and found themselves prospering in a negative environment. We read about what verse 1 calls an image of gold. Nebuchadnezzar looks in the mirror and says, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of us all? Evidently not giving the mirror a chance to answer, he said he was. And he developed what I like to call a theo ego. Theo is the Greek word for God, a God complex. You see, when stuff gets good enough, big enough, large enough, and financially rewarding enough, you think you did it. And that was his problem. He said, in fact, he says in one passage, look at this great Babylon that I have built. By the way, whenever you or anybody else start thinking like that to the point you start talking like that, it's getting ready to go downhill fast. So Nebuchadnezzar decides to consolidate his power and he would build a monument to himself. And he gives out a command to his leaders in verse 2. I want you all to come before the image, verse 3, that the king has set up, and I want you to command all peoples, all nations, and men of every language that when they hear the music, verse 5, that they ought to fall down and worship the golden image which the king has set up. And he says, I want you to bow under the threat Verse 6, of whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be cast into the midst of a furnace of blazing fire. You will no longer operate under the regime of Nebuchadnezzar because I want people who worship me. Now, many of you work for corporations like this that want you to worship the corporate structure. Many of you are in employment environments that don't only want your dedicated service, they want your soul. This is no less a call to idolatry. To worship an image that I have made and bow down before it 
and treat it like God. That's idolatry. Idolatry is simply something created to represent God that you bow down to. That's idolatry. If you can make it, it ain't God. The Bible says in Romans 1, the condemnation of God to men is that they took the creature and treated it like the creator. They took something that was made and they bowed down to it as though it were God. We bow down to the almighty dollar. You know? That's worship. When you treat something created like the creator, that's idolatry. There are three employees, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, who would not bow. Nebuchadnezzar, verse 13, in a rage, said, bring me Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they were brought before the king. He says in verse 15, if you are ready to fall down and worship the golden image, very well, we'll forget about it. But if you will not worship, you will immediately be cast into the midst of the furnace of blazing fire. And I have one question. What God is there who can deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to give you an answer concerning this matter. In other words, this is not going to take long. <laughs> You've asked us to bow to you and your gods. And then you ask us a question. If I fire you, and I do mean fire, you want to know, which God is there who's going to deliver us out of your hands? In other words, what you're insinuating, Nebi, <laughs> is that you are the final authority and the final say-so. And that if you don't take care of us, protect us, secure our income, and secure our future, we have nothing else to lean on. Let me give you our answer. You want to know which God is able to deliver us? If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire. But then they say something else that you don't hear a lot of today. But even if he does not, we all like verse 17. You love growing up hearing the preacher say, is he able? Yeah. That verse will get folks shouting. Everybody love Ephesians 3. Now unto him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think. We love that. But let's hear the rest of the story. He says, but even if he does See, these boys understood the whole counsel of God. They weren't running around here with this health, wealth, make me rich, prosperity theology stuff. Come to church and he gonna bless you. Come to church and he gonna move you to a new house. Come to church and he's gonna give you a new car. Come to church and he's gonna heal you. He certainly may give you a new house, may give you a new car, may give you new health, but he wants to know what you're going to do with him if he doesn't give you what you want. They not only understood the power of God, they understood the sovereignty of God. They understood that God makes the final call. And that you always have to leave that in God's arsenal of options. You have to believe him for what you want. And I like the way they said it. Our God will deliver us. That's how you move forward in faith. You say, I am trusting God to fix this, to change this, to give me this. God, I am believing you for it. And I am confident you're able. 
That's how you move forward in faith. You don't back up and say, say, I think and I hope and I wish. No, no. God, you're able. But you don't forget that he's sovereign. And that's why the Bible says what you ought to say is, if it's your will. Even if he does not, let it be known to you. Okay. Let it be known to you, okay. We are not going to serve your gods and we are not going to worship the golden image which you have set up. Because there is only room for one God. Too many of us have too many gods. So we never get to see the one God work because we got so many other gods we're looking to. If God lets suffering come your way when you're trying to do right, and it's coming against you. God let that come through to you for a reason. He want to know, are you going to serve him on the downturn? When things are in jeopardy, are you going to serve him? When you're not sure what he's going to do, are you going to serve him? They said, we believe he can do it. But King, we are so committed to our God that even if he doesn't do it, you can forget that bowing stuff. Because there's only room for one. Well, if Nebi is upset before the answer. He ticked off now. Verse 19, then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with wrath. He was mad before. His facial expression was altered. So you know he off now. When stuff get up all in your face. Facial expressions, you know, it, it, say it showed up in his face. How dare these boys I gave a chance to? How dare these boys I gave an opportunity to? Don't you know if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't even be employed now? Or you were, you were cast away from Israel. I didn't have to do anything with you. I made you what you are. You ever had people in your life like that want you to worship them because they did something for you? You can thank them, you just can't worship them. He answered by giving orders to heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. Now, you may ask, what's the point of heating the furnace seven times more? I mean, you're already in the furnace. You're going to burn. So what's the whole point of heating it seven times? He was so angry that he wanted them incinerated on the spot. That's how angry he was. He said, fire that thing up. Being committed to God did not keep them from the furnace. So they tie them up with their coats, their trousers, their clothes. They were cast into the fire. In fact, it was so hot, verse 22, the folk who threw them in got burnt up. But Nebuchadnezzar was in for a surprise. And Dr. Evans will tell us about it when he continues this message from his 12-part series, Where is God When It Hurts? It's a look at how to deal with problems and pain with perseverance and hope. It'll show you what the Lord is doing behind the scenes of your life when it feels like he's left you on your own. And it'll teach you how to recognize the signs of light when things in your life seem darkest. For the next few days, we're making the six CDs in Volume 2 of this collection available as our thank you gift for any donation you can make, no matter the size. It's only through the generosity of listeners like you that we're able to keep Tony's teaching on this station. And with Giving Tuesday just a few days away, there's no better time to let us know we can count on your help. We've made it as easy as we can. Just visit TonyEvans.org to get the ball rolling. Or give us a phone call at 1-800-800-3222 and talk to a member of our resource team any time of the day or night. That's 1-800-800-3222. Right now, though, let's get back to today's lesson. Here's Dr. Evans. Nebuchadnezzar, verse 24, was astounded. And shook up in haste, verse 24 says, and responded to his high officials. Maybe I'm losing it, but was there not three men? Come on, come on. And I, I ain't no dummy. I, I can count. Shadrach, that's one. Meshach, that's two. Abednego, that's three. Didn't did we throw three men in? 
Now you really got to be confused to ask other folk <laughs> how many you just threw in, who you were just talking to. You got to be, it says, I like the word here, shook up. He was all shook up. Uh, you know, just shook up. <laughs> he was, he just all shook up. He said, the reason I'm asking this question, verse 25, is look, I see four men. It's getting good here. I put in three, but my problem is when I look through this glass, I see four men. We tied them up when we put the boys in there. They are loosed. We had them all tied up. You ever been tied up in knots? Because of how things were going, how things were going at work. You were all tied up. They get put in the fire. You say, I see four, one more than we put in, and I don't see them in knots no more. He says, and they're walking around, not outside the fire, in the middle of the fire. Let me explain something. One way you know God is God is when he delivers you from the fire. That's one way. That's a good way. That is generally the preferred way. But another way that you know God is God is when he does not deliver you from the fire, he joins you in the fire. That's one of the ways you know God is God. But let me tell you how, how you know that God is God when he joins you in the fire. Because when you were put in the fire, you were all tied up. You were all in knots. You were all in stitches. You were scared. You were in terror. You were afraid. You were all messed up. But Jesus Christ joins you in the fire and begins to unwrap those knots and untie those knots and begin to set you free so you are walking around the fire. That's when you know God is God. When you're in the fire. It says they were walking around in the fire. He said, and the appearance was like the son of, of the gods, which means Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. Nebuchadnezzar wouldn't have known that. Jesus Christ pre-incarnate. See, you don't have Jesus Christ pre-incarnate. You have Jesus Christ incarnate. Okay, because he's already become flesh, but now he's in heaven, so he still does what he does in the Old Testament. He now does it differently through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, but he still joins you in the midst. And look at how it ends. Nebuchadnezzar say, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, come out. <laughs> the same one who fired them, rehired them. The same one who got rid of them, call them out. But notice the chain in his language. He says come out you servants of the most high God. In other words, I guess there aren't two gods in Babylon. I guess you got the real one because I saw what your God could do in the middle of a mess. Nebuchadnezzar changes his tune. In fact, it says when they examine them Verse 27, they noticed the fire had no effect on them. They were in it, but it didn't affect them. You got fired from your job, and God is still God? Sure, you're going to look for a new job, but, but God is your ultimate employer. And it shouldn't have an effect on your well-being. It says, not a hair of their head was singed. That's not possible. To be in a fire seven times hotter and smoke not coming up out your head. Their trousers were not damaged. You say, but how am I going to make it? Same way they made it. God took what they had and stretched it. Preserved it. Let it go longer than it was supposed to go. Do you know God can do that? You're out of money and still eating. Because God stretched it, elongated it, and made it go longer. Things to follow. How you gonna make your house? No, God stretched it, elongated, and made it go longer. You can't even explain how it happened. All you know is God was there. And I like this last part. They said, and they did not have the smell of fire. 
Oh, didn't even smell smoky. <laughs> Wasn't even smelling smoky. Why? Because God kept the fire from controlling them and put them in control of the fire. Nebuchadnezzar says, I want it to be known that God's angel delivered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, verse 28. So nobody is to serve any God except their God. Company changed completely. I make a decree that any offense against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be torn from limb to limb and their houses reduced to rubbish heap inasmuch as there is no other God that is able to deliver in this way. So why did God allow them to suffer? Here it is. To get more glory. That's why he did it. He got more glory in the fire than keeping him from the fire. So if God is allowing you in a fiery suffering situation and you're rebelling and cussing and fussing, he's going to keep you there until you learn why you're there, which is for him to get glory from you being there. And then it closes with this word. And the king, verse 30, caused Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to prosper in the province of Babylon. Oh, they got theirs only after they walked with the Savior in the fire and then were released from the fire that God promoted them to another level. Everybody waiting for their blessing. And God does want to bless you, but he wants to bless you because he can trust you. And he knows he can trust you in the fire. Anybody can trust you when there is no fire. But when there is a fire, he can trust you. And you believe that God is God. Oh, Nietzsche said one day, God is dead. Signed, Nietzsche. Then one day, Nietzsche died. And somebody wrote under Nietzsche's casket, Nietzsche is dead. Signed, God. If you believe God is alive, that God is real, that he deserves to be served, then do like you do good costly jewel, appraise him. And give him the value of the appraisal. The next time you're in a fire, look at the ring and appraise it. And see whether he shows up to meet you in it, if he didn't keep you from it, and see how he wants to use it. Give him the glory in the midst of the fire. Praise him in the midst of the fire. Worshiping him in the midst of the fire. And see what your God can do. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 God allows your suffering for his greater glory. Dr. Tony Evans, telling us we can still trust God's plan even in the midst of suffering. If you'd like Tony's complete look at how God walks with us through our problems and pain, contact us for details on his two-volume collection called Where is God When It Hurts? And don't forget, as I mentioned earlier, we're offering the CD version of Volume 2 as our thank you gift to those who can support the alternative with a contribution of any size. This collection includes bonus messages we won't be presenting on the air this time around. So don't miss out on this special limited-time offer. Make your contribution today at TonyEvans.org and request your copy of Where Is God When It Hurts? As always, you can get details and make all the arrangements online at TonyEvans.org or let one of our staff members help you by calling us at 1-800-800-3222. Our phone center never closes, so there's no need to wait. Again, dial 1-800-800-3222. God has set a banquet full of blessings in front of us. But what happens when there are items on the menu that we don't particularly like? Well, Dr. Evans will answer that question on Monday as he talks about how God meets our physical needs. In the meantime, have a great holiday weekend. The Alternative with Dr. Tony Evans is brought to you by The Urban Alternative and is made possible by the generous contributions of listeners like you. 